What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Growing up across Orange County in Los Angeles was awesome and it gave me the opportunity to visit all the theme and amusement parks in my area. Now I've also traveled the world for parks as well and I'm pretty sure it's time I started ranking beginning with one of my home parks, Knott's Berry Farm. This place is very special to me, I have a lot of good memories here so it definitely deserves a good video, so I'm very happy that it's my first. So without further ado, here are the top 10 rides at Buena Parks, Knott's Berry Farm. Starting off with number 10, we have Sierra Sidewinder, located just inside Camp Snoopy. Now, Sierra Sidewinder was a new for 2007 spinning coaster that aimed to be a step down for Montezuma's Revenge, mostly for little kids. It does have a ride duration that lasts approximately 2 minutes and is a really good medium for adults and their kids. Now, as an enthusiast, the ride still packs a great punch and is always worth a ride for me. However, it does spin more than you expect sometimes, so I'd watch out for that if you get busy. And beware of its line too. Not only does it have some awful switchbacks, but it's located at the front of the park with pretty bad throughput. Honestly, if it's more than 30 minutes, I'd probably skip out on this one and spend your time elsewhere. Nonetheless though, it's a great little thrill coaster and I have no issue putting it in the number 10 spot. Number nine is gonna be a step up in the thrill category and we're gonna take a look at Knott's iconic drop towers, Supreme Scream. Supreme Scream is located just past Camp Snoopy and transports brave open air riders straight up to an impressive 252 feet in mid air before power blasting them straight down in three seconds flat. Topping 50 miles an hour, riders will bounce halfway back up the ride structure before returning to the launch pad, leaving for some great views and thrills. While the ride is definitely fun, it is rather short and lacks any interesting theming, hence the reason it's so low on this list. It does get some of the shortest lines in the park though out of the major attractions, so I'd say anything between 20 to 30 minutes is probably worth your time, um, but again, it's not gonna be super high on this list for me. However, it is a great ride. This leads us straight into number 8 though, with the very fun attraction located on the other side of the park. This is going to be Knott's Berry Farm's River Rapids ride. Known as Calico River Rapids, this extremely wet attraction takes voyagers through the outskirts of Calico, where riders will encounter a variety of experiences along the way. These include wildlife animatronics, a twisting layout through the forest, and a number of water features. The biggest downside for me for this one is definitely the weight though. I would say if it's anything above 80 degrees in Buena Park, you can definitely expect a pretty bad queue. My recommendation would probably be 45 minutes or less on this one on a warm day. I and mean, if you don't want to wait that anytime in the evening for this park, there's usually no line for this thing. Right for number seven though, and this one's going to be a bit of a throwback for you OGs, Montezuma the Forbidden Fortress. For those of you who remember Montezuma's Revenge, this coaster opened in 1978 and was a launch coaster that would send riders back and forth through a vertical loop. Recently though, as I kind of alluded to, it did go standing but not operating in 2022 for some renovations. Long story short, they're replacing the track and trains, but most notably, the best thing about this new coaster is it's going to have a randomized launch sequence, whether you exit the station forward or backwards. So that's going to be pretty cool. Only drawbacks I can see for this are going to be it's rather low capacity and otherwise boring layout, but I do expect it to be pretty fun, just not top five worthy. So probably a 30 minute wait or so after initial hype dies down is going to be fair for this ride. Now, six is a ride I would most certainly prioritize though for those of you bringing families to Knott's and that is going to be their extremely old and one of a kind Calico Mine Ride. The Calico Mine Ride, Knott's Berry Farm's first major ride ever, opened in Ghost Town in November of 1960 and was quickly recognized as one of the world's most immersive dark rides. It was designed by industry pioneer Bud Hurlbut and it takes riders through an adventure that's pretty much through dimly lit tunnels of a working gold mine. You can view underground lakes, waterfalls, caverns filled with thousands of formations, chambers with steaming, bubbling pots and geysers, and a ton of animatronics. It also serves an educational purpose as well and is a lesson on the rich mining history of the 1850s. Cool thing for me as well, lines rarely exceed 30 minutes for this little guy as well, so I would absolutely recommend it if you have the time. Now, moving on from that, let's take a look at a larger attraction that many of you may recognize from photos and is the very first ride to crack our top 5 list here at Knott's Berry Farm. Number 5 with the B&M Invert, Silver Bullet. Silver Bullet is located in the center of Knott's and features 6 inversions with the ride duration lasting 2 minutes and 30 seconds. The ride does provide some great views of the park as you ride, but if it's more than 30 minutes of a queue line, maybe 45, push in an hour, I would get out of there. Uh, despite how cool it looks, across the big coasters at Knott's, if you're going to skip one, I would probably skip this. Um, Silver Bullet is notorious for its crammed switchback queue line, which can easily reach hours of up to two, um, even on mildly crowded days. So just given its placement in the park, uh, people usually flock here first anyways. So if you have time to do it, you can, but I certainly wouldn't prioritize this attraction. And from a roller coaster enthusiast perspective, it is pretty lacking in the inverted category. So sorry, not really sorry. Um, but anyways, 
it's kind of one of those it's just there if you want to do it um but let's step it up with the more modern attraction at number four hang time hang time would be the first must do coaster on this list for me and it is quite the thrill especially at night um hang time towers 150 feet over the boardwalk area at the back of the park showcasing a beyond vertical drop that is the steepest in california it also has five inversions and despite sometimes long lines actually has a pretty good throughput so I'd say for this one, anywhere within a 40 minute wait to an hour is probably worth a one time ride on this coaster. Uh, not to mention the incredible light package that comes with it at night um, and the whole area just a cool atmosphere. So definitely fun, fun things going on back there. But hey, I can't give too much credit because now we are onto our big three, the Timber Mountain Log Ride. Uh, since its opening in 1969, this attraction has always been one of the most elaborate log flumes in the US, taking guests through a journey pretty unique to this park. The ride experience lasts over 5 minutes and will wind through a ton of just fun and well themed areas, most notably its grand finale. One thing I will note, yes, this line does get long and it's brutal, uh, most of Knott's Berry Farms lines do. However, this ride in particular is one that will make little kids or even the most hardcore thrill seekers have a good time. Now that said, it's time for number 2. What could it be? What could it be? Oh, I know! Oh wait, it's down again. And again, and it hasn't been open for a year. It's back. Introducing Accelerator, the most intense launch, in my opinion, in the world. Uh, not the best, but the most intense, and it will absolutely rip your face off. Uh, going from 0 to 82 miles an hour, and I think it's 2.3 seconds, uh, you can enjoy perhaps the most intense ride. No, it is the most intense ride that Knott's has to offer, um, as you experience heights of over 200 feet accompanied by that breathtaking launch. Accelerator is located in the far back corner of the park. Um, I will say the reason I give this thing so much hate is because it is notorious for just never operating. But when it is, you best believe it is worth that wait. In fact, even a little over an hour is probably acceptable for this. I've never once come off of this thing disappointed or having not been in utter shock. It is a monster. Especially a front row ride, the experience is just nearly unmatched. I mean, yeah. Downtime and long lines are common though, so just be prepared. It may be a wait, but all things considered, if Accelerator's open, that is for sure worth, worth your time, especially for you, you thrill seekers. After all of that though, who's to say there could possibly be something better? I mean, I talked that thing up. Believe me, even writing the script, I'm debating, but I do have to say, my number one deserves this title. Nothing makes me happier than to introduce the best attraction at Knott's Berry Farm, and that's gonna be their wooden wonder, Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider, if you don't know, is the longest, tallest, and fastest wooden coaster on the West Coast and is, according to Knott's, the largest attraction at their park. It has been routinely featured on the list of the best wooden coasters in the world since its opening in 1998, and in 2015 it saw a complete retracking done by GCI, made it even better, along with some new trains. So just from an enthusiast perspective, this often makes a lot of enthusiast top 10s and is quite the experience. For me personally, it does rank very highly and is for sure a must do when the line isn't three hours, which is nearly almost always. <laughs> uh, still, I won't bag on it too much. The ride is incredible and should be a major point of effort in your day at Knott's. It is really a phenomenal attraction, my third favorite wooden coaster ever, and never disappoints. Just seriously, like, watch out for the line, though. It, even if it says, like, an hour, it's usually longer than that. And the ops, no offense to Knott's, I mean, they're, that's probably some of the worst ops of all time on Ghost Rider. Still, despite being my favorite coaster at that park, it is in the top 10 most miserable queues in the world as well. I know I'm not talking this thing up a whole lot, but I promise it's totally worth the wait. You just got to kind of plan your day around it and figure out when to do it. But yeah, nonetheless, that is going to be our number one. Ghost Rider is really incredible. CCI and GCI together did an amazing job just in the history that it's had being developed and created. So I would definitely recommend getting over there. With all that said, though, I am going to wrap up the video. However, if you disagree or think I missed something, please feel free to let me know or give me your top 10s. I'll respond to all of you on this video, so feel free. I really will. Also, hit that subscribe button. I hate saying that, but if you're willing, it does help a lot more than you guys know. Spencer and I, my new editor, we have a goal of hitting 100k soon, so if that's possible for you, that would be much appreciated. It means a lot to share this passion with you all, and I'm grateful for it, so yeah. And uh, stay tuned for another video coming in a couple days as well. Till then, though, we will see you all.